Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. Um, just got home without doing some drinking. Uh, don't don't get out and drink very much, but uh, I don't got a whole lot to do now, and I figure before I go sleep this one off, uh, I'm gonna making some pancakes in the background and some spam. You might be might be hearing that, so I apologize. Um, but I'm gonna make you a video here. Um, now a lot of you guys really like Swiss stuff. Uh, I really really like Swiss stuff because. How can you not like Swiss stuff? Because they don't make anything that's not good. Um, so what I have here for you is something I recently picked up, and it's a Swiss e-tool. Um, it's a very, very high quality e-tool. Um, not only is this thing ungodly heavy and ungodly well engineered, there's like no rust on it, despite this thing being almost, uh, well, it was made in 1975, this particular one. Um, so, um, but we'll get into the cover first. Now, uh, Here's the cover that you can see on it. it has uh, the manufacturer a little stamp in the year that it was made. It's made out of two pieces of incredibly thick leather uh, stitched and riveted in pretty much every place. Um, there's a strap over here for um, uh, attachment um, as well as two straps up here at the top for attaching it to your belt or uh, moly or whatever you want to do with it and one strap that secures the shovel in place. Um, very, very awesome. Leather's a little bit dry, so I'll have to condition it. Uh, but for the most part, this is, for being as old as it is, a very, very good piece. Um, very, very glad to have it, uh, especially with the leather sheath. A lot of these you find that don't have the sheath. Um, so I'll throw that over there. Now this is the e-tool itself. Now first we'll talk about the handle. Now the Swiss are so ingrained in quality that even their handle is done like how you should set every tool handle. It's done on the end grain. So that means when you look at the bottom of the handle, you see all the you see all the end grain in there, which is how you're supposed to make a tool handle. And they went to go through and even to take that consideration when making the handle on this piece. The handle is um, wider up towards the uh, actual head of the e-tool. has a nice bulb at the back uh, for, you know, so your hand has something good to grip onto when you're using it as a shovel or a pick or something. It has a nice um, textured uh, eight-sided um, grip here which is very, very nice. It fits very well in the hand, gives you a very, very good purchase, very, very good grip on it. And I have a medium-sized hand. It's technically my military glove size is medium, but I have pretty small hands. So, um, uh, but this fits really, really well. Um, now this shovel doesn't have a lot of rattle in it, doesn't have a lot of play. Um, it does lock into place in uh, three positions. Uh, one slightly angled for a shovel, one to be used as more of a pick, and then one, one to be completely folded down. Um, now when you do lock this handle, there's, it's absolutely silent and so smooth and nice. There's just nothing to go wrong on it. And it, this would definitely hurt. This is probably the heaviest e-tool I own. And I own a good amount of e-tools, but it's probably, just for reference, um, here's that Russian titanium one. All right, as you can see, it's not not anywhere near as long, um, but the Swiss one is probably five times as heavy. So it's also probably three times as thick. Um, the blade is held in place with six rivets. Uh, there is the manufacturer of the blade. If I could get it to focus. Come on now, focus. There it is. All right, so there is the uh, manufacturer of the shovel itself. Um, different than the manufacturer on the sheath, um, but these were used for a very, very long time. I think they were actually just recently replaced. I don't think that these are even fully replaced um, in Swiss inventory. I think these are still used by some guard units and are still in reserves and stuff like that and used for training purposes. Uh, but I don't think they're actually issued anymore to... Um, to uh stuff like that to the main army troops um i could be wrong on that though uh it was very hard to find information on these um but uh so if you have any additional information i'd very much like that in the comments um if you have uh if you're looking for one of these um these can can be found uh you have to be willing to pay for them as with most swiss stuff you have to be willing to pay for them but the thing is the trade-off for swiss stuff is yes it's expensive but 
yes, it's also going to last you two and a half lifetimes. This shit is meant to take a beating. The Swiss didn't adopt anything that they couldn't absolutely use forever. I'm sure if the Swiss were, you know, still had crap from like World War I or like the 1850s even, it would be just as good today as it was made then because they don't make anything that ever breaks, it, it seems like. So, but uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, if you have any additional comments, uh, questions, additional information, stuff like that, um, if anything I missed, leave that in the comments for people wondering about these. Um, uh, I'll do my best to answer the questions if you guys have any, but uh, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.